Japan is one of our favorite countries to visit. From amazing food, to beautiful sights to see, to having colorful wacky themes right next to simple traditional architecture, it's a place that offers so much. We spent 18 days in Japan and in this video we'll show you what an awesome time that was. As our plane descended, we were greeted by the rising sun and Mount Fuji itself, a truly symbolic start for our adventures to come. We spent our first day trying to get over jet lag by exploring the area around our hotel, having some snacks, visiting a shrine and having some tasty Yoshinoya beef ball for dinner. On day 2 we started with visiting the Meiji Shrine in Shibuya. Walking along the forest path and exploring the shrine's grounds is a relaxing experience where you easily forget that you are in the middle of a busy metropolis. We then headed over to Shimokitazawa, a part of the city that has some fresh and hip vibes with many vintage clothing shops, restaurants and street foods. Mmm, soup inside the dumpling. We then headed back to the famous Shibuya crossing. Making our way through the sea of people felt a bit claustrophobic, but thanks to the observation deck at one of the nearby shopping malls, we could get a more peaceful view of the crowds crossing the scramble. And this is for free. Shibuya has many unique shops, eateries and streets and we had a lot of fun exploring those till the end of the day. He said, And all I said, On day 3 we escaped from the busy city streets and went for a hike in nature at Mount Takao. No safety! <laughs> Taking a stroll in the forest, stopping for some delicious dango on the way and exploring the mountain's shrine complex was a truly relaxing experience. We also kind of knew that there may be a chance for us to have a glimpse at Mount Fuji from here, but we were definitely not prepared for the gorgeous sight that awaited us. It was as if one of those famous Hokusai pictures came to life. After arriving back home, we visited Asakusa's Hopi Street, which is filled with all sorts of Japanese pubs known as Izakaya. Drinking and eating was really enjoyable here. Day 4 was the one that we were most looking forward to as we traveled all the way to the foot of Mount Fuji. We could only imagine what spectacular views we'll have. Wherever we went, Fuji was always looking straight at us. And we also got lucky to catch some late cherry blossoms as well. Best ice cream with the best view. Mm. We then explored the town of Shimoyoshida a bit before heading to our next destination. A 
After hopping back on the train, we made our way to Lake Kawaguchi. With the lake in front and Fuji in the background, this was definitely my favorite site of the mountain. I also read online that there is a small family-owned sake brewery in the nearby town, so before heading back to Tokyo, we made a brief stop to get our hands on some local sake. Seeing Mount Fuji up close was a truly memorable experience, and we were only on our fourth day in Japan. The next day we started in Asakusa, famous for the Sensoji temple and the many side streets filled with shops and food. It's the best place to see and taste a more traditional side of Tokyo. We then headed over to Ueno, where right next to the train tracks lies the Ameyoko market, an ideal place to sample some simple local snacks. I couldn't resist taking a seat at a small stall serving seafood, where I had tuna on rice with some cold beer. Next up was Akihabara Electric Town, home for fans of anime, gadgets and all sorts of hobbies. It's a super colorful part of the city that has anime music loud on every corner and a truly unique vibe. During the evening, we went to our first live baseball game, and even though the home team we cheered for lost the match, it was a really fun experience thanks to the atmosphere of the fans cheering, the food, and of course, the beers we had. On day 6, we took things a bit slower and visited the Tsukiji market in the morning to grab some snacks. Mm. While the food was nice, the place was a bit more crowded than we liked. So we made our way over to the Tokyo Tower to have some nice views of the city's iconic landmark. Mm. Georgia Black. Our next destination was Nakameguro, where we ate some excellent ramen, visited the traditional Kyuasakura house and its beautiful garden, followed by sampling some craft beer at Spring Valley. On our way back to the hotel, we had to make a brief stop at the Pokemon Center to pick up some new friends for our journey, then close the day with some delicious Japanese curry. The next day, we took a day trip to the seaside town of Kamakura. This charming place is filled with many shrines, so we tried to fit in as many as we could. We started with the Hokukuji temple that had its own little bamboo grove, which was more peaceful than the famous one in Kyoto. Next we stopped by Hasedera, a large shrine complex with many interesting structures, a garden with koi fish in the pond, all kinds of statues, and even a cave you can explore. We then sampled some local street food and made our way to Kamakura's iconic landmark, the Great Buddha Statue. As we made our way back to the city center, there was still one shrine to visit up in the hills where we had to go through a tunnel to access it. Back at Komachi Street, we grabbed some snacks as we approached the last shrine of the day before heading back to Tokyo. Mm. 
Hello. Day 8 was the first rainy one, but thankfully Japan has many covered shopping arcades, so we decided to visit the one in Nakano. After grabbing a coffee and a few snacks, we explored the shopping mall known as Nakano Broadway, and if Akihabara was the capital of anime and toy enthusiasts, this place was probably heaven for them. It has many shops with cool new and antique items, and even if you don't buy anything, it's like walking in a museum of toys and other memorabilia. Unfortunately, the rain didn't want to stop, so we headed over to Shinjuku to shop a little bit and to have lunch at Torikizoku, a restaurant where you order small plates of dishes via a tablet. For the remainder of the day, we kept hopping between stores and explored the streets of Shinjuku. On the next day, we moved our headquarters over to Kyoto, using the Shinkansen train. Kyoto is one of my favorite cities in Japan, so I was really excited to stay a few nights there. After arriving, we spent the rest of the day exploring a shrine close to our hotel, and for the evening, we walked over to Pontocho Alley, a narrow street lined with restaurants and bars where we had our first Wagyu beef of the trip, along with some excellent views of the Kamo River. It was truly a delicious experience. Day 10 was all about exploring the many shrines Kyoto has to offer. We started early by visiting Fushimi in Aritaisha, famous for its many red tori gates. While there may have been a bit too many people at first, as we made our way up the mountain, the crowds started to shrink and the experience became quieter. We then explored other shrines as we made our way to the shopping street leading to the famous Kiyomizu Dera. Here I got really curious about the peculiar snack they were selling. The magical cucumber on plastic. Oh. It's pickled cucumber and oh. The Kiyomizu Dera is one of the many famous Buddhist shrines of Kyoto. And no wonder it's popular with people, as you get a nice view from here of the city and the shrine together. For the evening, we looked for a place where we could try some tasty hambagu, and somehow found a cafe that was hidden on the top of a building. The food was tasty, the interior looked unique, and we had a great view of the side of Kyoto we just explored during the day. The next day we traveled over to the city of Nara, which is famous for its wild deers roaming the streets. Walking among these animals made it feel as if we are characters in a Hayao Miyazaki movie. However, even though the deer are super cute, it's important to remember that they are still wild animals after all. We spend the day exploring the shrines the town has, like the Todaiji Temple, home to a large Buddha statue or the Kasugataisha complex deep in the forest. Wherever we went, we were always greeted by the deers of Nara, making the visit an otherworldly experience. Chicha. 
के Once we got back to Kyoto, we went to grab some dinner, followed by visiting a craft beer bar for some drinks to close the day. One thing we love to do is to visit markets in the morning, and we simply couldn't skip on Kyoto's Nishiki Market. Besides having some street food, I also had a nice sake. There's simply no better way to start the day. We then headed over to a shrine we haven't visited before, the Nanzenji Shrine that hosts some nice structures, peaceful gardens and a unique aqueduct. Our next stop, the Heian Shrine close by, may look vast and empty at first, but behind its walls it hosts a large Japanese garden for people to explore. For the evening, we wanted to go and visit Fushimi Naritaisha once again, but this time it was dark. The few lanterns that illuminated the many Tori gates gave the place a mystical atmosphere, and there were also only a handful of people this time. On day 13, we jumped over to nearby Osaka, where we started the day with visiting the iconic castle of the city. Osaka is known as the kitchen of Japan, and it is home to many popular dishes, including okonomiyaki, a savory pancake with many different toppings to choose from. Mm. We continued exploring the city by visiting the Dotonbori district with its energetic atmosphere and many large unique signboards. Here I was interviewed by a Japanese Facebook personality about our travels in the country. On the next day we switched our place of stay back to Tokyo. During the late afternoon we traveled to the man-made island of Odaiba where we visited the Gundam statue. And while we were there, we also stopped by the Gundam base to pick up some robot toys for ourselves. On day 15th, we traveled far from the city center to a part of the outskirts known as Kabagoe. This part of town is famous for having many traditional merchant houses intact and has many street food places and an alley dedicated to sweets. It was like walking back in the past of Tokyo, which is also why Kawagoa is known as Little Edo, reflecting on the older period of Japanese history it resembles. Kawagoe is also famous for its sake, and there was a really cool place with vending machines to try them out. As a closure of the day, we headed back to Akihabara to experience it during the night and had some Japanese curry once again. On the next day, we took the Shinkansen up north to visit a place from the UNESCO World Heritage List, Nikko. This town in the mountains has many shrines and temples close to each other, surrounded by the forest. One of them, the Toshogu Shinto Shrine, is dedicated to the first shogun of the country, Tokugawa Ieyasu. 
You can easily spend hours admiring the many beautiful details of the structures here. Monkey. 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 Fruvoidus. For our penultimate day, we dedicated some hours to shopping in some of our favorite stores. And since our hotel room was looking straight at the Tokyo Sky Tree, we got inspired to go up the tower and view Tokyo from high above as the city lights slowly started to turn on. For our last day in Japan, we wanted a chill experience, so we took the train to the outskirts to visit Shibamata. Home to the character of a popular and long movie series, it was relaxing to walk in the charming shopping street, visit the local shrine, and also go to where many anime scenes take place, the artificial riverbank. Visiting Japan was a great experience. We saw some beautiful sights, had some amazing food and had a lot of fun in the meantime. We hope this video inspires you to visit this wonderful and beautiful country and if you enjoy this kind of content then consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in our future videos. Bye!